Hello and welcome to your May 2023 full moon reading with myself, Thomas Janak. Now, why, I hear you ask, is there, a, is there an amethyst portal in the video? Number one, it looks good. <laughs> Number two, we do need a bit of protection for this one because this full moon is in the sign of Scorpio. And what that means, I will tell you about in a minute. But it is also a lunar eclipse. And a lunar eclipse really only happens when the moon goes through the shadow of the Earth, if that makes sense. Um, this one is also um, happening with an elongation in Mercury. And because of the way the shadow moves across the planet of communication, which is Mercury. And Mercury's retrograde only comes direct on the 15th. And the full moon obviously happens 10 days earlier. Anything to do with communication will be quite difficult. Not only this, this time the full moon opposes, is in direct opposition with the planet Uranus. Now, Uranus by default is an outer planet and it is the planet of sudden and unexpected change. But opposition is what is known as a hard aspect, <clears throat> which means understanding what to look at at this point in time is also much more difficult and you can't even express yourself because of the Mercury retrograde in the elongation. So that is all quite something to take in. Let me just, um, no offense to the amethyst, it looks a bit dodgy and a little bit weird. Or maybe it just looks perfect, who knows. Anyway, hello. <laughs> so. Fun aside, this is not an easy full moon at all. So, at the full moon, obviously, the idea is that the full moon is, is fully illuminated. Which means we see everything, we're looking at things, it's quite a positive energy, therefore. It's just when it opposes, um, when it opposes uh, another planet like Uranus, and obviously, um, is happening during an eclipse. Now, the lunar eclipse only really happens twice a year. And while the solar eclipse sometimes only takes minutes, the lunar eclipse in May 2023 takes a total of five hours and 12 minutes. Now, five is the number of change. That's another thing to, to, to remember. And so is Uranus, because it is the planet of sudden and unexpected change and five is the number of change. So these two elements come together quite strongly and because the moon which is supposed to see everything, our emotions which are supposed to be switched on, are now completely all over the place due to the opposition and the elongation with Mercury, which means communication isn't working so well. well it's not really working well at all. <laughs> so in total, there's quite a lot of going on. And the reason why this is all maybe coming to, an he to a head has to do with the fact that the full moon sits in Scorpio. Now, this is nothing negative about Scorpio, if that makes sense. But the energy of Scorpio is the energy of opposition and now having a direct opposition between the full moon in Scorpio and the planet of change makes things quite difficult. The point at this full moon is that emotionally, while oftentimes the full moon helps us, um, gives us strength to get through emotional upheaval, not this time, right? Not this month at all, because May just happens to be the fifth month of the year. So you have another element and strong uh, energy of the number five, the number of change to contend with. Um, everything is numbers, everything has an energy, everything has a vibration. The vibration of five therefore seems to be everywhere, obviously with the month of May, uh, the full moon happening on the fifth, and the list goes on and on and on. Uranus being the, the planet of change, five uh, being the number of change. Point is, anything to look at will be very difficult for you to even express, that's number one, and to back off from any issues that you may encounter 
will also be super difficult. And the reason why this is, is because of the placement of the full moon. Now, the, the full moon sits in the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is obviously named after the depiction of the planet. Oh, this is my... Oh, yeah. It's a cat here. Hi, sweetie. Hello. Hi, sweetie. Anyway, so where were we? Yes. So, but the depiction and therefore the energy of Scorpio is Scorpios and Scorpions. So, because it has a depiction um, of that being, which has its own energies to contend with, the Scorpion has the biggest fight or flight response of any, any animal guide. Also, the energy of Scorpio as a sign oftentimes is completely opposed to what it just says yesterday. <laughs> so the point is, as a Scorpio, as a, as a sign, the energy of, of, of a lot of Scorpions is, I'm not quite sure here, and I also don't, not quite sure how, I, how I'm supposed to react here. So that is a, a very common trait in Scorpios, so sometimes not being sure where they're going. And while that is difficult enough, in conjunction with all the elements I just mentioned, during the full moon, maybe three days before, maybe up, up to three, four days after, you will find it very difficult to make any sense of any, any to make any sense of anything you really need to clarify. The advice therefore is to try and step back as best you can, let the energies of the full moon pass, understand that even an opposition will pass. The issue here is that whatever it is that needs to happen will happen in the energy of change. So what the full moon is doing when it happens is, for you, is, is to make you look at things that really aren't working and that haven't worked for a while because Uranus being the outer planet is a planet that needs to remove itself to see where it's going. And because of the of the lunar eclipse, you don't know where you're going, right? So, energetically speaking, while not everybody is affected, as a matter of fact, but a lot of people are, and anything and everything that happens in the universe is a reflection of what happens to us. So we are a true reflection of the universe. So the advice is the following. Try to understand that a lot of things will come to you in and around the time of the full moon, where you kind of go like, I have no idea what to do here. And because you have such a prominent fight or flight response to everything around that time, this is how this works. Now we're looking at the scorpion, at the scorpion or Scorpio as an energy. So let's look at the scorpions and what they really do. The idea is that the smaller the Scorpio, the more venom it needs to protect itself. Therefore, the taller the Scorpio or the taller the scorpion, the larger the pincer, the less venom it needs. So therefore, if you do speak up early rather than late, a lot of things that could otherwise really, really end badly will not end badly. That is sound advice at any given time. The problem that we're having is that all this advice that is normally great when a full moon happens, goes bloody nowhere because of the fact that we're not only having a full moon, but a lunar eclipse, which means the strengths that your emotional core is providing by saying like, let's look at this, let's deal with this, has this massive um, blow that says like, oh, maybe another day, right? And then being in Scorpion, the guy that says like, yeah, no, yeah, but, no, but, let's do this, or, or maybe not, right? So the, the confusion that is in, in the energy of Scorpio is therefore also amplified. Now, you combine this with the fact that Mercury is in retrograde. Mercury is the communica communicator, right? Um, so communication is, is, is different. And then the shadows that are going on cause an elongation in Mercury. The elongation just means that there's another shadow going over Mercury, therefore making it even harder to communicate properly, concisely, precisely, and in a good manner, right? So 
Point is, try to step back as best you can. It's not worth it to blow your lid because of your, your feeling um, not sure where I'm going, so you feel smaller, hence needing more venom. Um, whatever is happening during the full moon, if you give in to your maybe anger, maybe frustration that comes out, all sorts of shit could happen. Don't go there. Allow yourself to understand that this particular full moon will very likely lead you leave you feeling shattered, leave you, oh, um, stuff isn't working, I don't feel so great here, I don't know what to do about things. That too shall pass. Just allow yourself to sit with it, understand that you're going through changes, the, f the universe is full of changes, do not panic, but also do not respond a lot to other people's nastiness, because they're all losing their, their cool because of the full moon being so weird and knocking everyone everyone for a loop, right? So the trick is, if you can go on a retreat, if you have a meditation practice that works for you, maybe you play an instrument that can help you express yourself a bit better, do all these things, but understand that this is not the time to look at things that need to, to be changed and expect them to be changed amicably, kindly, and ultimately efficiently. Okay, so, sounds a bit like the Doom show here today, not meant that way, but this is really not a great full moon energetically, and we're sitting in it. So, let's all decide to make the best of it, and let's not respond to whatever comes our way, because ultimately it can wait, right? That's what we're going to do. Right? See you all next month. Bye-bye.